actually 100 100 kilometers away from mumbai and luckily there are no cases over here thank god thank god that's hmm. something very heartening to hear yeah luckily there are no cases over here and we are cut off from mumbai so we are connected by road and waterways so both we are disconnected so luckily no cases as of now there was a rumor but hmm. as of now no issues how are you ma'am i am doing fine here yeah. thank you thank you for asking yeah i mean i wish i could say the same about where i live but uh, yes we are in a heavily uh, heavy lockdown situation but yeah. uh, but but we are still as a society we are doing fine i i mean when i say society i mean that apartment wise apartment wise there are no cases uh, that has been identified here and um, the basic the essential needs are being taken care of uh, even here uh, there are like strict measures hmm. strict measures are there but luckily as of now as i told no cases ha uh, yes and what do you all feel that after third may is there going to be relaxation no here yeah, i don't think so in maharashtra there won't be any relaxation mm. because people over here are dependent upon mumbai and pune so mm. if there is a relaxation people will travel and there will be much more issues so there would there shouldn't be any relaxation here at this place at this moment yes maharashtra is a hot bed as is yes, delhi mumbai is a hot bed mm. as is delhi ncr so maybe relaxation yeah. places which are you know the smaller towns which are removed from the, the metropolises mm-hmm. there could be but what you are saying is right the moment there is relaxation then it will be difficult to stop people from moving and all of that and people here are dependent upon mumbai and pune so it's not easy because within 45 minutes we can reach mumbai and within 3 hours we can reach pune so mm-hmm. it's not shouldn't there should be any relaxation shouldn't be feasible um right so um, uh, now tell me it's already 11 should we uh, start our uh, session or do we wait for uh, some more time what is general opinion how many participants are there let me have a look as of now we are 29 29 yes i can see 29 people hmm omar should we uh, start or should we wait for a while Minutes and started. All right, we should begin. All right, thank you, thank you. So good morning, everybody. Thank you for uh, being here on time, and uh, we are here. You know for what we are discussing: virtual interviews, and very possibly this is going to be how things are going to be in future. Uh. a lot of you might have answered virtual interviews already so anybody who wants to uh, share somebody who's already answered a virtual interview so i request all of you to actually keep your mics on unmute don't bother to mute them if there is a little noise in the background we will live with it but i want to keep speaking to you so that we are we are engaged in the session okay please so unmute yourselves and feel free to speak anybody as yet i'll repeat my question anybody as yet from the campus or otherwise has answered a virtual interview already uh yes ma'am i did attended a virtual interview it was during my internship time uh, okay it was with the shimizu uh, corporations hmm. so it was kind of a very um, short interview so i cannot explain much but it was basically a question answers round so we had a little uh, like he was asking me few questions i answered them and that's it okay and uh, after that have you answered a face to face uh no ma'am it was just uh, just uh, like no not virtual. not with them not with them uh, necessarily but you have you've had one virtual experience during your internship and then later in life have you ever had a face to face experience yes yes ma'am yes ma'am uh, a few have of them have... like i i sat for spcl then i sat for uh, a lot of companies finally i got placed in 360 realtors yeah sure 
Congratulations on that. Now my next question is, did you find the two interviews different? The face to face uh, and the virtual. Which one yes, for I'm you was more effective? I feel the face to face interview is much more effective for me because uh, uh, I get to know what the other people is basically uh, like I can see his expressions. I can feel what is uh, what he's anticipating from my answers and all those things. So yes. I can manipulate or mend my answers in that way. Somewhat. Excellent. Excellent. You have given us the lead for the session. You have given us the lead for the session. Avnish, thank you so much. So which is why I guess we need to do uh, a session on virtual interviews because as one of our own friends has said it and admitted it that in a virtual interview for him face to face was better but because in a virtual he does not know how to play along with the body language in a real interview he can see the other person so he can manipulate is the word he used so he can tweak his own body language and modify his own responses according to what the other person might be expecting so you can anticipate that which is why yes, we are in a session yes which is why we need this session that how virtual interviews are going to become the norm and what should we do about it great so the objectives of this session let me know if you can see my second slide because i seem to be not able to change it can you see my second slide no ma'am no okay give me a minute let me just do this one more time All right, so this becomes a challenge of a virtual interview and this is a real time happening. When I was when I just thought I was set with everything for my own virtual session, I see that uh, uh, I'm not being able to share it. So this is a lesson for us. OK, can you see the objective slide? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So this is yes, what we are going to yes, we are going in the next one hour. This is one hour, or maybe if we stretch for ten minutes, just bear with me. We are going to learn about this. What is a virtual interview? By now, most of us know it, but a little more in detail. What are the platforms that are trending now, and thereby how you need to get prepared for each of them? The challenges of a virtual interview. Our first speaker for the day has already initiated that conversation. We'll build up on that. Building readiness for a virtual interview and readiness happens at various stages that we will dwell on in detail. And how do you ace a virtual interview? These are the objectives for today's session. Now, what is an if, the, if it is just a reading slide, I will not spend too much time on it. You know, a virtual interview is something where we are not face to face and we are doing what we are doing now. Now, the session we have now is in an audio mode. The video part is not happening. Very possibly your interview will have the video on also because your potential employer does not know you as a person. So for them, for now, you're just a candidate. Pardon me for using the word, but that is what they are thinking of you as. So you, they want to see you also. OK, so your video is going to be on. It helps. You know, these are the virtual interview uh, helps organizations get talent from all across the world at low cost. See, a lot of companies who come to our campus also, uh, uh, JLL MENA, for example, not everybody is going to always come from Dubai for an interview. So they're going to do it virtually. So these are the platforms. Till now, you know, till the before the lockdown, when whenever we thought virtual, we thought Skype. So we almost use the word Skype synonymously with the word virtual. And we would say, how can we crack a Skype interview? But now when we say virtual, it could also be a MS Teams interview. It could be a go to meeting. It could be a Zoom. Zoom nowadays has become very famous after the lockdown. It could be a WhatsApp video call if you know, nothing else is working. We think WhatsApp is informal. 
but if nothing else works, people can get onto the WhatsApp call and complete the process. FaceTime we think is informal and friendly. People have started using that too for an interview if the other platforms are uh, not working. So these are the uh, this is the beauty of it. We have a lot of uh, platforms nowadays. See, RICS SBE has started doing its interview for the students. You know in what form? There are two types of virtual interviews. Okay, one is one way. Like for now, I am talking. You are listening. It's a one way communication. The other one is a two way thing. You could be facing any one of the things in your career. When I say career, I don't mean just the first job that you will get from your campus. It could mean any job that you go to from now onwards. OK, so be ready for both in the one way thing. You, you are there and you're just talking to each other. That, that's a two way communication happening on a like a regular Skype call. In the one way thing like this is what SBE does. Your employer has sent you some questions. You are making a video of the answers and you're sending it back to them. They see the video, they gauge your body language, they see your responses, they can analyze your thought process and then they make a decision. This does not mean that this is only one round. You will have your written round, etc., etc. But this one happens by way of video. The benefits of virtual interviews are many. The whole industry, and this makes it a little scary and a little responsibility, a little more responsibility on our shoulders is, now the industry has access to the best talent in the world, not just on a campus. It is saving their time and it is saving their cost. And they can interview anybody, anytime, regardless of time zones. When these are the benefits of the virtual interviews for the employer, we have to think as students or as potential employees, what can we do to get noticed? So now here I leave open the stage and I want a couple of inputs. What do you think you can do to get noticed? Because now earlier, do you remember we used to talk in terms of, see there is uh, RICS students have no competition. There is only Nikmar. That is how we would be talking when our campus placements would happen. But now with everybody else being in a lockdown situation, the recruiter is also thinking out of the box. So it may not be just an RICS or a Nikmar in his mind anymore. He could be accessing information from across the world. Now, what do you do? Anybody who has something innovative up there, Ali? Give me some responses, please. What, what, what do you think you can do? Because all these advantages are for the employer. But how can I as a student reap benefits out of it? How can I uh, position myself? How can I position my own brand virtually? Ma'am, this is Afaz. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Ma'am, uh, uh, the, the change of platform can be done by uh, the uh, previous, like the location preference skills or the job profile will be remain mm. same uh, as of past. Mm -hmm. Only the uh, things can be changed, like uh, other uh, uh, recruiters uh, take interviews for a whole day. That can be minimized for the recruiter only. The skills uh, we uh, we have to learn or we have we are learning in a professional of student field anything it hmm. will be only hmm. it, it it will be more uh, difficult for the students or, or the candidates only to hmm. represent because uh, in this session like we can see the connectivity or hmm. the voice we doesn't know uh, what our voice will be uh, going to the to the recruiter right That's absolutely so absolutely it, it's like a uh, like i'm a uh, uh, He's having, he's wanting a younger one, or he's having a voice of a of a, a older person. Mm. 
it can be uh, done. So uh, interpretation can be uh, done in, in an uh, HR interview. We go to the technical interview. We cannot. Uh, uh, we can only give some examples or something. Only that then uh, we have to take a face-to-face -face interview. Uh, otherwise, uh, the main purpose of uh, mm. okay. Thank you for your input. So till the face-to-face -face interview happens, if it happens at all. What I suggest you can do is create an impression with a video. Here's a small example. You know, I would make uh, the placement students make videos of themselves. This used to be a classroom activity and they would be given an hour's time only to do this. Have a look. And there is no sound in the video. Did you say there was no sound in the video? There yes, ma'am, no, no sound. Okay, because I could hear no the sound. sound. I could, I could hear the sound well. I could hear the sound well. What I will do is after the session, I'll uh, share this with you all also. And my suggestion will be, you could see the video, right? You could not hear what he was speaking. So what Atif was doing, he's made a video. He's speaking about himself. He's speaking about the skill sets he brings to the table. And he's speaking about his hobbies. That is it. He was a fresher that time. So there was no experience he spoke about. My suggestion to all of you is after this session today, make a video. If you don't already have something like this, please take time. And this one will take you at least 10 attempts. It doesn't happen at once. Make a video, write it down. First, write out a script. Introduce yourself. Remember, we have done this writing out a script in class also when we were doing these sessions. Write out a script about yourself, strengths, hobbies, and if you have experience and make a video out of it. If you think a potential employer wants something like this, even if they have not asked you, you can suggest that, sir, before I meet you on Skype, before I meet you for the interview, can I send you a snapshot of myself? And then send this as a profile. They will form a great opinion of you. They can form a fairly good idea of you, seeing your body language, seeing your confidence, the way you speak, and of course your skill sets, It'll have it'll be there in your uh, CV, but here they will hear you speaking about it. This one helps in brind, building a brand value. Okay, can you hear me, all of you? Yes, ma'am. Yes, please yes, do this. Create, create, create a make a video of yourselves. So the challenges of a virtual interview. Some of you have spoken already. And to overcome these challenges, we will see what else can be done. But some of the, the there are there are two different levels of challenges in a virtual interview. One is the human challenge, where there is no face-to-face -face interaction. It is difficult to read body language, as we have spoken about. And thereby, because I cannot understand the body language of the interviewer, I don't know how to connect with him. There are ways to overcome them. Because there is no face-to-face -face interaction, what I do is I keep looking at the camera steadily. Human tendency is to look at the small grid which is appearing on the right-hand corner of the screen to see how am I looking. This habit I must get out of. And I must keep looking straight at the camera. I must keep my laptop a little at a height so that my eye level and camera level is the same. If it is difficult to read body language, at least lean a little forward, smile appropriately, gesticulate, use your gestures appropriately while you're speaking. 
because it is a camera interaction, don't sit stiff. Let the recruiter understand your body language also, because that is more important than you understanding his only. Now, you are not being able to connect with the recruiter because you can't understand his body language. What you will do is, whatever you can understand, you will try to mirror that. You will try to reflect that. We'll talk about mirroring a little later in the session. But mirroring is a great way of building rapport with the other person. So this is something we will dwell on a little later in the session. Now, what are the technical challenges? They are all got to do with technology, poor connectivity. So if you think you have a very important interview coming up, and your house is not in a place where your broadband is very strong or whatever, just go to an internet cafe and take the interview. Bandwidth issue, same thing. Device not charged. This you have to remember to charge. Unavailability of headphones. My suggestion is everybody invest in a good set of headphones. It will be worth it. Faulty audio video. We have to seek IT help or go to a cafe. Power cuts, not in our hands again. Anything could be happening. If there is a power cut, you're in, you're in between an interview. Always nowadays, we keep the phone number of the recruiter handy. If there is a power cut, what you'll do is you'll immediately give him a call, him or her a call, and say that, sir, there's been a power cut this side. Can we take this on WhatsApp? Can we take this on telephone? Lag time is important to understand. What is lag time? Mostly happens if you're in two different time zones. Your recruiter is sitting in Dubai, you're in India. You see his or her lips moving, you tend to answer. But the lip syncing has happened, the audio will come a little, a few seconds later. So don't immediately start replying the moment you see the lips moving. Let the audio reach your ears, listen to what is the question, and then respond. So first one, two minutes, it's uncomfortable, then you'll get used to it that there is a lag, that the lip is moving first and then the voice is coming. This you'll get used to it. Whoa, that's some good music somewhere, someone is playing. Okay, look at these quick tips. Tell me if you can hear the uh sound now because all these videos have got good sound no ma'am no ma'am there is no audio no ma'am Ma'am, no sound. 
Okay, no sound is what I heard twice. See, the first tip that has come to us through this video is you'll you'll watch it later. Uh, first tip is sound. And then this gentleman was standing in a very open big room, which was echoing. So if you are sitting for an interview in a room like that, for a normal conversation, it's okay. But for a video, it will echo. The funder is that any room which has got stuff in it and the next shot was he was he was in a library with lots of books so if there are things if there are furniture books etc in a room the echo is less so find a place for yourself to take an interview where your sound the way it reaches the interviewer is important is going out well okay without echo and reverberation second thing he was talking about a location and you saw various backgrounds so he says Cut out noise. You don't want construction to be happening outside. You don't want the AC to be making too much of a grr noise. So find a location which is quiet and professional. See, it, when school reopens and you are doing the virtual interview from the school, then the school takes care of these kind of logistics. Normally, we have the interview in the room where Professor Nihar sits in the room next to that, or you will be in the conference room. So all that logistics is taken care of. If you're doing it from home, then see that your background is clean. Now, I normally prefer a white background. The gentleman in the video says white is too bland. So you could. So what he has done is, as you can see in the picture here, he has put a bookshelf. He says you can put some house plant. You can put a lamp so that it looks that, okay, there is warmth. And then you can answer. Okay, till now. These are the two tips he has shared. Okay, so if it is, if you're doing it during the daytime, you want a window or a source of light in front of you so that your face is adequately lit up. You don't want it, want the window behind your back so that you are in the dark and people, the recruiter is looking out of the window to see the background. Now, the third tip was about lighting. If you're doing the interview at night, what kind of light should you have? Do not have, first, do not have an overhead lamp. Because then your face, the lamp, you know, you can have an overhead lamp if you want to play carom board. So the lamp light is diffused on your head and it spreads all around you. Not nice. Two, don't have a lamp under your chin. You will look spooky. Three, what kind of a lamp do you really want? The one that he showed at the last. Keep it far or near you. As much of lighting as is good. Now, if Nitin, Nitin Gandhi is on a call. He's the uh, operations manager at RICS SBE. He ha has started excelling in making videos. We can probably have a five minutes discussion with Nitin about the kind of lighting that is good for you if you want to make a video impression of yourself. Make a video one and then also when you're taking a facing a virtual interview. Now, the fourth tip he's talking about is you yourself. <laughs> Uh, hi, ma'am. This is Rahul. Yes, Rahul. Uh, ma'am, share your video. There is a option. Uh, up shout, uh, right? Uh, include system audio. So once you click over there, then only uh, this uh, 
video audio will be you know uh, enabled for all the participants okay where where is that rahul tell me again uh when you uh when you do see your screen just above if you see uh, include system audio okay wait one minute include system audio where we are sharing screen there is what you saying yes yes before before uh, i mean just click the share screen and above that you will see if you select the desktop and then only you will see the uh, option where it shows share uh, i can only see share there's just one arrow yeah so click over there hmm include system audio okay if i've ticked it yeah and the, yeah. then now i play it probably it will happen is what you're saying let us yes, try yes. again okay i let confirm include system audio oh, i have selected again yes now let me know even just a few inches back and forth can be really distracting yes sir now it's audible now ah uh, thank god find a quiet thank place you, without distracting so please want me to play this again or set up a good background set your camera at eye level arms length away make sure you have good lighting and make sure you look good now i've put all this into a checklist for you and you can find it in the link below the video that's it good night and good luck okay so those quick four tips and thank you so much yet again rahul remember the four tips the recap so you're going to be uh, interviewed give us those tips sound is something that we were talking about we are looking about talking about location we are talking about light and we are talking about you so when we are talking about you the gentleman says that at least on top be well dressed i would i just have a small uh, word of caution here you know i was of the you know i was of i was uh, i was of the same opinion that at least your top should be well dressed but what for some reason if you have to get up to you know fetch yourself a glass of water or a paper and pen and then suddenly you realize oh oh i can't get up because i am wearing pajamas underneath so it is a good idea to just be well dressed you will feel more prepared also is my word of suggestion to you so now how do we move to our readiness for a virtual interview the first step we plan for it what are the things that include planning we plan what to wear we plan what is the image that we want to create in front of the recruiter we plan how we need to groom ourselves and we need to plan our responses so attire by now you have attended a lot of placement workshops and you know what is good attire for a man what is good attire for a lady and most of you are good with this for a virtual interview maybe you don't need to wear the shoes because that is something that will definitely not show but everything else has to be in place your hair has to be in place your facial hair men have to be in place you must come across as a professional because see the kind of situation we are sitting in currently most of us are not looking the best and that is the truth but if you have an interview one of these days then make sure that you are you know you are bathed you are washed you are wearing ironed clothes and you are coming across as somebody the recruiter would want in their team so grooming is of utmost importance uh ladies see that your jewelry is minimal and see that your hair is neat and it is not you know falling on your face so much responses what do you do i know in your in your workshops professor omar bashir anshul they have made you uh, prepare a lot of responses so your responses you have to plan now when you when you plan your responses <clears throat> when you plan your responses you have to just remember one thing that maybe i had planned a certain response the recruiter has changed one or two words of the question so let me live in the moment let me 
be attentive to what is the question and not just give out an answer that i have learnt up so be very mindful about that the second stage of building readiness for a virtual interview especially is preparing and this preparation okay. takes time let me repeat this preparation is not a one night thing it will take time because it is happening at different levels it is happening physically it is happening mentally emotionally you need to prepare for it spiritually you need to prepare for this why have i put in so many points here why spiritual why emotional see physical preparation is still the easiest please sleep well the night before the interview wake up fresh have a bath groom yourself have breakfast so that your stomach is not growling when you are answering questions check your device check your network etc etc learn from today's session know that you have to share audio you know so those these things you have to prepare physically mentally please calm yourself affirm tell yourself that this interview will give you your dream job prepare mentally to portray yourself as a winning candidate imagine the outcome imagine that after the interview you are getting the offer letter because when you imagine visualize we call this creative visualization read a book by uh, manoj gosain it's it's a wonderful it's a best seller very thin book on creative visualization how you can imagine your own future and thereby create it anticipate questions mentally rehearse your responses see anticipate questions also i know you have done a lot of preparations there is a database of questions with us in soc and you have, you know that there are lots of questions and you know the answers to most and then as i said earlier be present in the moment be mindful if there is suddenly a different question then don't give a prepared answer give a immediately thought out answer emotionally how are you preparing yourself keep nervousness at bay just don't let yourself get nervous tell yourself that okay this is not the end of the world keep your act together meaning hold yourself you know be composed if you do not know an answer it is okay to tell the interviewer that i'm sorry i do not know this answer i can get back to you with this be ready to face rejection extremely important in life everybody tells us how to win but what if i don't win am i falling apart no it is okay this interview did not go well does not mean that the next one will not it's okay so we must as adults as professionals know how to take rejection and emotionally another preparedness is and this will not happen only for the interview this will happen if you live your life like this be truthful it will keep the pressure on you less if there is something you have not done if in the internship you have not done a certain thing please don't say that you have done it if in your presentation if you have not done something don't say that you have done it so be truthful otherwise anyway you will be caught spiritually how are you maintaining yourself pray prayer brings about a lot of concentration in us it calms our nerves it takes care of a lot of things in our life pray to whoever whichever power on earth you feel can help you guide you please pray to that super power practice mindfulness through breathing correct through meditating through focusing through yoga any holistic practice that you are in if you are not very soon in life you must pick up one of these habits because you are going to get into a world which is a completely one it is a new world as you all said people may not change in the new world they will remain the same you need to keep your body mind and soul together and as a leader of the future you must have some practices which will keep your stress levels at bay also a very humbling thought is that not everything is in our hands see a lot of, by now in the last one month we know that for a fact not everything is in our hands so whatever the outcome of the interview okay i have given my best i cannot decide the outcome adopt the attitude of gratitude we must be grateful for whatever we have in life i must be grateful i got an opportunity for the interview today i must be grateful that out of 150 people 10 were selected i am one of the 10 so if we practice that attitude of gratefulness more comes our way we attract more good things 
because we are giving out that aura of being happy and appreciative of whatever we already have you know there's a beautiful serenity prayer serenity is s e r e n i t y you can just uh, look up serenity prayer in google which says uh god give me the courage to change the things i can the acceptance no the serenity to accept the things i cannot and the wisdom to know the difference this is a beaut i love this prayer give me the courage to change what i can the serenity the composure to accept the things i cannot and the wisdom to know the difference so if we keep this in mind we will not be too much heartbroken when something doesn't work out our way and spiritually also remember the transience the impermanence of transactions no so and so has got this much ctc my salary is not good this is not what i wanted i have already spent 10 lakhs in my mba people remember if you are working hard and you are working ethically money cannot elude you you will get what you deserve in life it may be today it may be 6 months later but monetary transactions are temporary please do not base your happiness on that remember that is very transient it is impermanent the real things of life are much deeper than your ctc or whatever you are getting at the end of the hand that's very important no doubt about it but if you keep sweating over it you will miss out on the beauty of life so preparedness for your virtual interview happens at a deeper level than what meets the eye remember that and then the final interview moment you've planned you've prepared and now you're presenting yourself now if your stage 1 and 2 have been taken care of chances are very high that this you will do it for here you don't need now too much preparation very quickly you you remember all of this you have to dress sharply you have to green, groom yourself well you have to see that your system is charged sit against a good clean background see that no clothes and your poster girls and boys are hanging in the background look at the camera not at the screen smile thank the interviewer in the end let them end the call you will not be in a hurry to disconnect listen very attentively very reflectively and then answer be pleasant and courteous at all times please do not pick up a fight with the interviewer and it is okay to say sorry i don't know an answer nobody expects you to know everything people are checking you for attitude remember okay and keep a pen and paper handy for note taking because you don't want to toggle between your own screen so it's good to have a hard copy of something ready so if we remember all of this we are in a good position now let us go step by step what are the things in which you can put in your heart and soul to it first thing know your potential employer now this point becomes much more important in today's time all right your bd team has sent out a job requirement find out about who these people are a little bit is there in the mail already find out who they are now currently what you will do is whichever are your dream companies find out how these people are handling the pandemic crisis how the, how are they cry you know managing their employees managing their selves what are the csr policies they are doing during this covid crisis because this will give you a fair idea about what they stand for one two it will give you a fairly good idea to talk about something break the ice talk about something of common interest in a virtual interview and this body language thing that is a challenge for us will be taken care of why because you know about them and you can talk about your potential employer so please do this ask for the jd beforehand the job description normally is shared with you beforehand if by chance it is not maybe you are uh, you are you know uh, uh, trying for a job from outside the campus please make sure that you ask for the jd see what the job description is like prepare yourself to answer questions according to the role they are looking for 
update your CV according to the job role. I know all of your CVs are updated already. Can you see a CV that has popped up on screen? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, yes. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Okay. Rahul, is there something else I need to share? Because there was a hyperlink. So basically hyperlink, uh, maybe it is in extended mode. So you can, uh, you just need to share again. You need to, sh I, okay, I need to share again. I'll do that. Can you see this now? Yes, now it's coming. All right. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much to learn. We will never know technology in its fullest. So see that your CV is updated. You have a professional photograph. Uh, we have a standard format already in SOC. All of you have it like that. Put your internship experience and speak about it well. Anybody who is a fresher, this internship experience, if you speak well about this one, your recruiter will not go beyond this. You know, keep talking a lot about what you have done in your internship and how that experience will help you in the current role. People who come with experience, of course, you will talk confidently about what you were doing as a, a team member or a team leader in your earlier organization, how you uh, quit that job to, to upskill yourself with an MBA program. And now you're moving back into the industry. So you will talk in those terms. So see that your CV is in a good updated position. All your details are there. Uh, your references are there. Your personal details, whether you have your passport, etc. See that everything is in place. Also, remember this. If you have a if you have an offer from somebody who is outside the school, you are free to. You don't really need to stick to the same CV format. This is very professional, but you're free to change your uh, wordings according to the job role that they want. So feel free to do that. Prepare well in advance. Okay, this one we can never, uh, you know, emphasize enough. You know you have a list of common interview questions. There are behavioral questions. So you know how, what you have to answer. There are some common interview questions. Like again, there is a hyperlink. I'll reshare. So common interview questions. We know that they ask us about, uh, tell me about yourself. For this one, I have suggested, please make a video. Keep a video ready. You know, once you make the video ready, what you can do is you can share it with me on my WhatsApp. I can listen to it, look at it and give you feedback. If that is something that is easy for you, you can share it with uh, Omar, sir. You can share it with, with Anshul. Uh, they are your placement coordinators or you can share it with me. Anybody you feel who can give you feedback. Why should we hire you again is one of those very pertinent questions. So you know what are your strengths, etc. What is your greatest strength? Talk about it with confidence. Confidence is your greatest strength. And don't boast about something that you have not done. That's okay. If you have not done it, it is fine. Nobody is going to hang you for it. What is your greatest weakness? This is a trick question. Your greatest weakness, if the, if the job requires a content writer, then your greatest weakness cannot be that I am bad at grammar. Okay, then be sure the job is not happening. So a greatest weakness could be that uh, I lose track of time when I'm working. So that brings you that brings you across as a very sincere employee who goes with the flow. So something like that can be your greatest weakness. Why do you want to work for us here? You could again very sharply tweak your answer. You, you can you can base your answer in contemporary times. You will say, sir, I've been following your trajectory and I have seen how the organization has been managing itself and its employees during this global crisis. I think I, I think my skill sets will be very suited to 
an altruistic organization like yours which believes in compassion and empathy for its employees you know if you base your answer in something contemporary something relevant they will know that you have been following them that means you are interested in them that means you are a sincere student you are a sincere candidate so all this gives you brownie points why did you leave your last job may or may not be relevant for most of you if you have left your last job you've left it because you wanted to do your mba now if you have already gotten a job and then in 6 months you want to quit it do not speak anything ill about your last employer speak nothing bad about your last employer maybe your boss was a terrible boss and that is the truth why you left but you will not speak about it you will say that my skill set and the job role were not in tandem is what i realized and i want to do something that i can contribute to more effectively in this is what you are going to say never bad mouth anybody in your previous office what is your greatest accomplishment this again is something that see anything could be your greatest accomplishment maybe you are the uh, head of the student body maybe you are the marketing head maybe you have uh, you were the editor of your school journal maybe you are the volunteer in your society he is who is now doing the roti seva for the noida authorities maybe you are the person in your locality who is the volunteer that is going around and feeding 1500 people every day who do not have enough you could make these also your voluntary activities could be your greatest accomplishment because the way the world has changed in the last one month people are not looking only at something quantifiable as an accomplishment they are looking at the softer elements of life also so you could you just think through what is your greatest accomplishment maybe you are you know maybe you have a family business and although the workers had to all go back to their villages you are you have uh, you have convinced your father that no you are going to pay them no matter when they come back you are going to not deduct their salary that is a great accomplishment so see which what you want to position difficult describe a difficult work situation how did you overcome it see these are questions you will have stories ready for these and talk about it where do you, this is again a common one where do you see yourself in 5 years never say sir in your chair this is a threatening answer don't give this answer it's very tongue in cheek so say that you want to be in a bigger role looking after a global team do you have any questions for me ask questions which are not there on the website if there are questions that whose answers are there on the webs on the company website already don't ask them it will show that you haven't done your uh, homework you can say something like sir it was great talking to you uh, when is the uh, if this interview has gone well i would want to know when is the earliest i can join something like this you can ask okay also prepare well in advance this you have done already uh punctuality matters today in the call you know when we were beginning the session i was in the call 15 minutes ago i saw already some of you are waiting in the lobby 15 minutes ago that's a wonderful thing it tells the recruiter that yes this person is very interested in the meeting and they are looking forward to being with us joining us that creates a great great impression so virtually also punctuality matters See, there's a there's a wonderful technique that we are going to talk about you know because these kind of questions that we just dealt with these are all behavior based question questions technical questions will be dependent on your subject you've prepared them you know your construction project management you know your quantity surveying you'll be able to answer behavior based questions are a little more Uh, they need a little more uh, preparation so we'll just have a quick tip video cannot open the file is what it says okay
Okay, this I'll share with you later. Punctuality matters. We have done this. Be sharply dressed. We have discussed this already. Smile. It reflects your confidence. Yes, this is very important. Uh, smile appropriately. If you look very serious, they'll feel that you're nervous. Seriousness in an interview or a business meeting could be mistaken as nervousness. You want to come across as an agreeable, pleasant person. Somebody they want in their team. Listen attentively. This is important. Listen to what the person is actually answering, asking, and accordingly you will answer. Be a whole body listener. You know, you have to listen with your brain. You have to listen with your eyes. You have to listen with your ears. Your expression, your smile must show that you are an attentive person. Do not fidget with your phone under the table. Stay focused, very important. Now, you're taking this interview from your home. Prepare your family that in the next one, one and a half hours, you cannot uh, refill the cylinder and you cannot answer the doorbell. You need to prepare everybody in the family also. You need to stay focused. Do not multitask. Do not check your WhatsApp. Do not try to take a phone call. You will be found out. Build rapport. This is something we had spoken about earlier. How can you build rapport? How can you build a connect with the person? There are two, three small ways. One is by talking about a topic of common interest. How will you find out common interest? By looking through the company website by knowing your employer. Second, by mirroring body language. This is another way of building uh, rapport. So keep the pets and the babies away. This is a complete no-no. Rahul, I need to play uh, an audio now. Is this, is the sound there? No, it is not. So you no. have to select again. Just share again and select. Okay. still not coming there is no audio well, are you able to uh, listen any audio in that video yes 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 i can i can you told me to share it again so but, i shared it again have you selected that uh, include audio option do i have to keep uh, choosing it every time yes yes every time whenever, <laughs> okay. you, whenever you say it uh, you have to select okay i thought you have to just share it once you know oh you have to okay let me just do that again Is it audible? Have you ever come across two people sitting together, exhibiting the same physical posture, deeply engrossed in conversation? You don't have to overhear what they're saying to know that they're in total rapport. I'm Carol Kinsey Goman, author of The Nonverbal Advantage, and I'm talking about mirroring. When a colleague mirrors your body language, it's his way of non-verbally saying that he likes or agrees with you. When done with intent, 
Mirroring can be an important part of developing business relationships and building rapport. Here's how it works. Mirroring starts by observing a person's body posture, then subtly letting your body reflect her position. If her hand or arm is on the table, wait four or five seconds, then place your hand or arm there too. If she smiles or leans forward, you do the same. You can adjust your vocal tone, volume, or rate of speech to be more like the other person's. When a person is closed off or resistant, the easiest way to increase her comfort level is to use mirroring. Just be careful not to mirror highly negative postures such as both arms and legs crossed or an upper body that's turned away. In business situations, you know that you've developed mutual rapport when your partner begins to mirror you in return. Body language often reflects feelings and attitudes. So when you're mimicking another person's posture, you actually begin to understand more about him. And that can be the basis for real rapport. Mirroring is useful with clients, sales prospects, customers, and coworkers. It's a silent signal that you're positively relating to the other person. Try it out for yourself. Okay, so this quick quiz. Did you understand the value of mirroring? Question to all of you guys. Please unmute and answer. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so how how are we mirroring? What did you uh, understand from the video? What do we do to mirror? Ma'am, gestures and the uh, and the uh, the gestures of the other other person. Like we have to. Uh, mirrored on the basis of the uh, different perceptions of the person. Like if he is not liking the mirroring, we mm. have to uh, see or uh, not uh, uh, sh uh, it's a shaking hands. Sometimes some people don't shake hands at uh, different intervals. So uh, it could be avoided. It, the different parts can be done through that to mirroring. Like, yes, uh, like, yes. Uh, like, first, like firstly, we, if we uh, uh, interact to a newer person, how should mm. we interact with the base? The same person or we should interact more and do it if it is mirroring. Now, great. Remember now the mirroring, mirroring part we are talking in terms of a virtual interview. So as a potential employee, as the student, you have to be ready to mirror the other person's body language to be. And why are we doing this? Because we are wanting to connect with that person. What is connecting with another human being called rapport building? R-A-P-P-O-R-T. That's the English pronunciation, Rappo. If you join an American firm, they will uh, they will spell the word, the, they'll pronounce that word as, word as rapport. So you're building rapport with another human being by mirroring their body language. Now, uh, th there's a video I wanted to share with you on how you can answer those behavior-based questions from the PPT, it wasn't working. Give me a minute, I'll try to play it from the VLC itself and tell me if you can hear it. Rahul, you'll have to uh, like help well, me with this. Based interview questions. Is this, uh, uh, what? Technique where you can talk about situation tab. Okay. Can we can we hear and see this uh, video audio? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All right. Yes, so, uh, folks, listen to this very intently, and there's a quiz after this. Well, with behavior-based interview questions, uh, what employers are doing is they're looking at past behavior to get a predictor of future behavior. Let's say they ask, can you give me an example of a time where you took initiative to solve a problem? They want to hear a story about where you took initiative, and you need to organize that using the STAR technique, where you can talk about situation, task, action, and result. What I see a lot of students tend to do is they'll tell us a great story and forget the results. That's like watching a great movie and not seeing the ending of it. Well, the STAR technique helps organize their thoughts. Behavioral interviewing is telling a story. You're telling us a story, you're setting up the situation so we understand exactly what you're doing. You know, you set the frame, you set the picture for us in our minds. 
the task is, um, you know, what was the problem? What was the issue? Set that piece up. And I want to know what you did, not my manager did this or we did this. I want to hear a lot of I. What did you specifically do? And the results, how did it end? It's like telling a joke and not giving the punchline if you don't add the results in there. When they get those behavioral questions, take it back to a, a specific example, explain what they did, set it up, give the details, and include a lot of names, dates, times, numbers, and places. The more details you can give, it really helps the employer understand um, the depth and breadth of what you accomplished. Oftentimes, if a student is giving examples that say, we did this and we did that when they're talking about a committee, I will stop them and say, that's great that your committee did that, but what specifically did you do? And what I find oftentimes that they didn't do anything. You really want to kind of go through your resume, um, go through, even, even go through the last couple of months of emails that you've, that you've had from student organizations, from your work, from different classes, and really get into the detailed, one or two or three detailed stories that you can tell, that you can actually know exactly what happened, exactly what the concept was, who was in the meeting, what the real problems were, what the detailed actions were, and not only what you did, but some of the options that you um, or the group considered before making the final decision, and then details of what the result was. Well, David, can you tell me about a time where you set a goal and you thought you did everything possible to achieve that goal, but still fell short? Sure. Um, actually, I had a similar experience to that during my internship during the summer of 2010 with uh, UBS Investment Bank. Um, I was working in their global healthcare group, and really one of the first type of tasks that we had was working with one of our major clients on a merger model. So we were doing a pitch for them and coming up with a hypothetical merger situation. And my task was to create the merger model and come up with the analysis so that we could show them our numbers so that it made sense. So one of my senior um, associates came to me and said, David, you know, this is, this is your task. Go ahead with it. We're not going to help you out. Do your very best and we'll come to you at the end of the day. So I literally spent the next, I would say, 12 hours working on a computer on my merger model, which I thought, man, you know, I've spent 12 hours. This is going to be perfect. There's nothing wrong with this. And when I finally presented my model saying, you know, we've got accretion here. We're going to make money off of this deal. The client's going to love it. The very first thing they did once I printed it out was take a red pen and cross an X all the way through it. And they said, you did absolutely everything wrong that we were looking for. And although you spent 12 hours, we're now going to have to go and redo this. So me, you know, this is my first week, first week as an intern sitting there thinking, wow, I spent way more time than any full time person would actually spend on this. And I did it all wrong. How is this possible? I'm not going to get a job at all. And now um, all my dreams of doing investment banking are ruined from this one engagement. And what I later realized was the fact that, you know, when you come in, and this is what they told me at the end of the summer once I finally received a full-time offer, when you come in, they understand you don't know everything. You know, you're not supposed to know every single thing about investment banking or your internship in general. But when, they, when you come in, they wanna see that you are putting forth the full effort, you're going above and beyond, and really trying to do your best in terms of what they show you and what they want you to do. So at the end, that same senior analyst who crossed an X direct, directly through, which you know, I, I will admit it was incorrect, my work, he later said, you know, David spent half of a day on this model. He didn't give up, he was determined, he was confident in his work and what he thought was right. Even though it ended up being wrong, that same determination was what helped him to really be a perfect candidate for what we're looking for as a full-time um, analyst. So although I failed, and I definitely did fail. I did my best and I learned from that experience and ultimately uh, got a return offer from UBS. First, the candidate provides information about his project for UBS and the amount of time and work he put into the project, which helps the interviewer gain a real understanding of his efforts and the value of the task. Next, the candidate structured his example using the STAR technique, situation, task, action, results. Situation, explaining his UBS summer internship with the Global Healthcare Group. Task, explaining the merger model he was developing for a client to share UBS's financial expectations for the merger. Action, the amount of time and effort he put into the project. 
results, the lessons learned from his mistakes, and how he overcame these failures to receive an offer for full-time employment. Third, the interview candidate's story was focused on a specific project and experience rather than a story about how he generally overcomes failure. Finally, the candidate's story was specifically about his experience and not a shared story about a team's accomplishments. Did that make sense, the STAR technique? Yes, ma'am. So now when you have these kind of questions, what has been your greatest accomplishment or what is your greatest, greatest strength or why should we hire you? You know, these are questions that look for very specific and very personalized answers. Keep these responses ready with one concrete story which has the STAR technique. Quick quiz for you. What is STAR? What is S? Situation. 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 All right. What is the uh, T? Situation. Task. Task. And then? Action for A. Action. And Action. And, and, and result. And then result. result. So everybody, all of you, my suggestion is for some of these behavioral questions, and we had 10 of them in that PDF that I was sharing, keep a story ready with a star model because this will stand you in good stead. Thank you. Everybody gets a crore rupees for the star technique answer. You got it. So do you want a refresher or have you understood everything about a virtual interview? OK, a quick refresher is here for you. Uh, this is something that sets the stage. I'll include audio and whatever we have talked about so far. This is a recap. Hello everyone, my name is Krupa Balakrishna and in today's session I will be taking you through the essentials of a Skype interview. A Skype interview could be quite different than a normal face-to-face -face interview. You will not be at the place or the location of the recruiter, you will be in your own comfort zone, probably your house or even an office. It differs a lot from a face-to-face -face interview in many ways. You will be in an advantageous position because you have the advantage of being in your comfort zone. At the same time, you might have to work a little more hard to impress your recruiter. Recruiter. Most essential aspects of a Skype interview are the digital handshake, your body language, your presentation. What is a digital handshake? Well, it includes all those activities that you carry on in the first 10 seconds of your Skype interview. It is those first 10 seconds that matter a lot because they help to create an initial impression about you with your recruiter. So make sure that you make the most of it. What includes in a digital handshake or what you need to ensure to make sure that a digital handshake is successful? First, you need to make sure that the room you choose for your interview is well lit. It is void from any sort of noise or distraction. Another important aspect of your Skype interview is your background. You need to make sure that your background is professional, plain, and something that does not distract your interviewer or recruiter from you. Remember, you want your recruiter to con concentrate and focus on what you are saying and not on what is behind you. You also need to make sure that there are no technical difficulties in your interview. It might be a good practice to go through a Skype interview or a test Skype call with your friend before your interview just to make sure everything is in order. You also need to remember to make Make sure that you have access to high speed internet connectivity when sometimes your skype interview is interrupted by slow speed internet connectivity or a disruption in the connection it is definitely a, a turn off for your recruiters so make sure that your internet connectivity is up to the mark as well the next aspect of your skype interview is your presentation now when i say presentation i don't just mean how you speak but also how you dress remember it is the same as your face-to-face -face interview it replaces your face-to-face -face interview so you need to ensure that you dress up accordingly you need to dress up exactly the way you would for a face-to-face -face interview in fact you would you might have to focus more on the colors you wear as well because we are not in 
in a face to face interview but in a place which has lighting so your gaudy clothes could distract your recruiter so make sure you choose subtle colors make sure you choose clothes which are formal which are plain and also ensure that you don't have too much of jewelry on your excessive makeup could also distract your recruiter so avoid excessive makeup as well the third aspect of a skype interview is the body language body language plays a very important role in a skype interview remember you're not face to face with your recruiter so you have to work extra hard in case of a skype interview especially when it comes to body language it's usually the best when you bend a little forward lean and look into the camera because that gives your impression your recruiter the impression that you are actually listening and are interested in this interview verbal cues and verbal nods are also very essential in your interview you need to make sure that you look into the camera looking into the camera is what gives the, imp the impression of an eye contact on a face on a skype interview and that is what is essential on a, on an interview be it a face to face interview or a skype interview so make sure that you make the eye contact by looking into the camera it is also essential to make sure that your hands are not making too many movements because that would again distract your recruiter you have the advantage of being at your comfort zone so what you could do here is make down jot down the points of your company and then keep them aside either in a sheet or put them down on a word file and keep it open on your laptop or your computer just to make sure that you can refer them back whenever the companies ask you questions about their their details or their uh, informations another important aspect of your skype interview with is to do with regards to the technical aspects you need to make sure that you have the latest version of skype updated on your laptop or computer you need to make sure that your computer has is well supplied with electricity there is no hindrance with regards to that and make sure that your laptop is fully charged we don't want your laptop turning off during a skype interview you could also ensure that your internet connectivity like i said is of high speed and is continuous ensure that there is no other distraction apart from what is there on your laptop so to close down all all other tabs that could probably pop up in between you also need to make sure that any sort of an email or any other sort of a um, notification that might come up on your on your laptop could be avoided by muting all of those notifications as well apart from these essentials there are certain do's and don'ts that you could keep in mind to ensure your skype interview is a success do remember to smile at your interviewers because a smile is an indication of confidence it also helps you to be in ease so make sure that you smile and make sure that you address all the interviewers if there are more than one interviewer or recruiter it is essential that you that you also address each of these interviewers with their names and this will be informed to your mails so make sure that you have a list of these details as well do remember to greet your interviewers at the end of the Skype call and also mention that this is your first Skype call if that is your first Skype interview do mention that is the first Skype interview do not navigate from your screen or go on to other tabs in, during your Skype interview because your recruiters can make out that you are being distracted also please do not give away your skype details to anybody apart from your own recruiters because these are personal details and that could lead you to danger so that's about today's session we will be adding more videos about skype wow so that was a good refresher i think for all of you to remember as we move towards the end now your skype interview is over there are two questions there's one question in your mind did i make the cut Yes, you did. And if you did, then the recruiter will get back to you with the result. BD will send you a congratulatory mail. And so then you get ready to sign and fill up various forms for your uh, job offer. Uh, no, you did not make the cut. So do not take this as, at the, as the end of the, of the journey. You have to remember that this rejection may not be is not necessarily a reflection of your potential the truth about a lot of company hirings is this and please remember that many companies already have a lateral movement predecided and they are doing this interview as a ritual that okay we have done an interview and we have interviewed uh, you know 10 candidates for the job but their decision was already made so these kind of things are inside stories nobody tells you this but if you have not been selected after an interview, you have to remember, one, that not everything is in our hands. Two, this is not necessarily a matter of potential. Three, if it is a matter of potential, well, I will work harder next time. And there are many factors that play a role in the outcome of the result. 
So the hard work is in our hands and the outcome is not. Remember, all, all uh, spiritual books tell us that. So we have to keep an open objective mind about it. Most great people have attained their greatest success. Just one step beyond their greatest failure is something that can always keep us upbeat and positive. And last word, through the experience of acceptance or rejection, keep your professional network profile robust. Update your LinkedIn profile following the best in the industry. Model yourself on industry giants you aspire to be one day. That will always help you be getting ready for the next role. Now, for example, you want to model yourself on the professional best. Currently, who do you think is your professional best? You might want to just, you know, model your LinkedIn profile on Sean Tompkins. He is the global CEO of RICS. Just see what Sean is up to. Send him an invite a LinkedIn invite. See Daman Juneja, for example, he, he is a student. He's there also in his uh, uh, contact list. Look at how he has, you know, updated his own page. So you know that this is what he's the, he's the global chief executive. So this is, you know, that this is what a winning LinkedIn profile looks like. And why is this important? Because in a virtual interview, possibly, the interviewer has already seen the soft copy of your CV. If there was a LinkedIn URL there, they might have browsed through it before they are meeting you virtually for the face to face. When I say virtually, I mean when you are looking at each other face to face through the camera. So something like this you could do. So does that make sense? You could also, you know, so you could look at Sean's LinkedIn ID. You could look at the director of your school, his ID, Professor Joseph Tanikal. He is the director of SOC. So look at how he has done up his LinkedIn page, what he has written in the about. You could replicate that model for your own self without those numbers, of course, because he has experience on your side, which uh, you still have to build. So, you know, this is how you could make your own online presence robust. And one more example we have is uh, our faculty present in the session know about Dr. Anil Sani. The students still now don't. Anil Sani was the director of the School of Construction before Pro Professor Joseph Tanikal took over. So this is how, again, another winning LinkedIn profile will look like. Look at the about, look at what he is doing now. He is the director of the infrastructure sector. And now Anil Sahani, Professor Anil Sahani is settled in Great Boston area. Earlier, till two years ago, he was here, the director of School of Construction in Noida. So look through all of these winning profiles. And then it tells you, it gives you a fair idea about how you want to see yourself in life. Thank you so much. Good luck for your next job and happy interviewing. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so Thank much. You, Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you all so much. I hope this session was of some use to you. And whatever is your feedback, you could write in the chat box. OK, and I promise by the next time we have a session, I'll get a little better with technology. Rahul has taught me a lot of things today. Thank you so much for being patient, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ma